Some of you may remember about a year ago, I put a game called Age of Fear in my video on best turn-based necromancy games. And I said that one of the big improvements I'd like to see is that the game gets an open world. Well, Age of Fear the Free World is exactly that. It's also free to play. So if you've got no idea what these Age of Fear games are like and you want to try it out, this is the perfect opportunity to try it without getting burnt. These Age of Fear games aren't for everyone. If you're the kind of person who needs cinematics, state-of-the-art graphics, all that stuff to enjoy a game, then you probably won't like this. But if you're the kind of person that can look past all of that, you'll probably agree that there's a good game here. You can choose from six factions, which is a lot more than the original Age of Fear game. In this video, I'll only briefly go over the undead faction. Your main character can be a fallen knight, a necromancer, or a banshee. I always choose necromancer because I like to have the main character hanging back and casting spells, but if you want a different playstyle, the other options are good. You start out with a small group of zombies and 250 gold pieces. You can purchase another unit with the gold pieces if you wish, or you can save them for later to buy a better unit or items or whatever. After this, you'll be shown the world map and various encounters on it. When you click on an encounter, you'll usually be taken to a battle, but other kind of events can occur as well, like story decisions or merchants. When you win a battle, you get money and items and your units gain XP. When enough XP is gained, you can evolve them into stronger types or apply buffs to them. For example, I can evolve a skeleton into a skeleton mage, a skeleton warrior, or a skeleton archer. But I can also choose to upgrade it to have better weaponry or armor, or to improve it in a more general sense by promoting it. Promoting a unit will give it more hit points. You can also rename your units, so you never forget that first zombie you had called Jimmy. There's an incentive to keep your units alive as best as you can because of these upgrades and whatever personal attachment you've formed for them. It's nice to look at your units and see that Jimmy has grown from a humble zombie into a fine abomination. But it hurts a lot if you lose Jimmy in battle, so watch out for that and try to keep Jimmy alive. You can end up with some very powerful units, even liches, by keeping your troops alive and continuing to evolve them and upgrade them. If you do lose an advanced unit like an abomination with many upgrades, you can usually purchase an abomination to replace him, but he's going to lose his promotions like if he's become a veteran or something, your new unit won't have that and you'll have to wait for him to level up to restore these kinds of things. Something I really like about the Age of Fear games is that there's actual necromancy in it involving corpses. You can purchase new units of gold if you want, and this is a great way to get very good minions very quickly. But the other way you can do it is to actually resurrect units in battle. So if you kill a human or whatever, or maybe an orc, you can raise a skeleton from this corpse, and it starts off as a very crappy kind of unit, like just a basic skeleton. It'll die in one hit. But if you manage to keep it alive, you can keep upgrading it, and you'll end up with very good units from this. I think this is an important point to mention, because I know a lot of necromancers out there are actually looking for games where you create minions from corpses rather than just having them appear out of thin air or something like that. The combat is just as good as it was in the original game. It's highly tactical combat and positioning, unit composition, etc. is critical to winning the hard fights. I think that anyone who enjoys this kind of tactical combat should try this game. I'm the kind of person who really enjoys the hard fights in games like Dead Winter Nights 2 and Divinity Original Sin. Sometimes I purposefully bite off more than I can chew in these games to get an intense fight going on, because I get a kick out of the difficulty of it, and Age of Fear delivers on this for sure. Positioning of units is important. Units that attack the enemy from behind can backstab, gaining additional chance to hit. As your units kill the enemy, the enemy will lose morale, and your troops will gain morale. If you execute an attack well enough, you can demoralize your enemy, and they'll wind up retreating. Your own troops are vulnerable to morale loss as well, unless they're undead. The living troops in your necromancer armies like necromancers, acolytes, and death knights are all affected by morale. There's also an inventory system on your units. Your hero can make use of weapons, shields, jewelry, potions, and more. 
By default, your standard troops can only make use of potions, but you can change this in the misc options if you wish. So it's actually possible to give Jimmy a fine blade or some nice armor. I like that the game gives you this choice. And being able to customize your minions to this degree further incentivizes you to keep them alive and look after them. I've spent about 12 hours playing this, and there's not much of a story from what I can tell. This doesn't bother me, I've just had fun going from place to place exploring and growing my army and doing the hard fights. It's a different experience to the very story driven and linear original Age of Fear game, but I've enjoyed it a lot so far. Another very important improvement with this game over the original Age of Fear is its performance. The original Age of Fear used to lag a bit on my system no matter what. This game doesn't seem to lag at all. Maybe a tiny bit at very occasionally, but not annoyingly so like its predecessor. According to the Cheb Gurnaz scoring system, I really can't fault the game. The minions are plentiful, useful, and they're permanent. The casters are certainly squishy and weak, but the minions aren't craftable. But craftability doesn't really play a role in this game. It's not a 10 out of 10 game, it's a bit too simple for that. But it is a 10 out of 10 minions game. I can't fault the mechanics in this at all. It's satisfying without a doubt. So I have to give it a 10 out of 10 for its minion mechanics. All in all, it's a fun game. If you've always been on the fence about Age of Fear, give the free world a try. If you liked a lot, you might want to try the other Age of Fear games as well. Before I go, I'd like to add some constructive criticism. I think this game would benefit greatly from an overland map of some kind. Many games have this, like Mountain Blade or the recent Pathfinder Kingmaker. It would make the open world experience a lot better if you could see your party walking around on the map and seeing the various encounters as icons on the map. The problem with the current system is it's like teleporting from place to place and there's no sense of journey from location to location. With an overland map, any kind of additional mechanics could be implemented to help create this sense of journey. The party could be ambushed on the way to a new destination, or maybe the party sees a dangerous group of enemies and has to take a detour, or maybe the party is hunted down and killed by paladins before ever arriving. This kind of thing would improve Age of Fear the Free World a lot. And this is, like, really the only criticism I have of this game. It's a really good game. I think that the developer did really well with it. I have a lot of respect for these indie game developers because making games is really, really hard. And he's built a very good game here with solid combat mechanics. There's a lot of mechanics in this that I didn't really go into. For example, I'm fairly sure there's stuff like resistances in the game. And there's the whole item side of things like potions and stuff that I didn't really go into. The difficulty in this gets really hard, especially, you know, on impossible difficulty. I can't even imagine how hard this game is on that difficulty. For sure, if you do it, this is an impossible, you'll have to make use of every item and artifact you can possibly get. This is by no means an easy game. It's actually pretty hardcore. Thanks for watching. I've got more videos on necromancy games, mods, and books coming your way.